So I'm delighted now to be joined by uh, Professor Kevin Anderson uh, of the Tyndall Centre at the University of Manchester, uh, one of the big leading thinkers around climate science over the years and what to do about the climate crisis. Kevin, thank you very much for joining us and speaking to the Wildlife Trusts. It's a pleasure. Tell me, uh, for you, how's COP going so far? So if you're looking for leadership here, do not look for it in the, in the, the older men with, with suits in the blue zone. Look for it outside of that and you see much, much more leadership and drive there. And I always think we have to recognise that leadership is a partnership. It's not just something that's passed top down. It's a blend of messy blend, very messy blend of bottom up and top down. And so at the moment, I think that the, the top down part has abdicated much of that responsibility. But the bottom up part is demonstrating the sorts of levels of change that, that are necessary if we are to, to stay within 1.5 to 2 degrees centigrade of warming. Now, so many of the protesters on the streets, particularly the youth movement, often talk about climate justice. And mm. actually, if we're going to get any progress in this, we have to do it in a way that delivers climate justice. Tell us, what does that mean for you? Well, one is that the, the huge reductions we need to make in the wealthy parts of the world are not just because we want to avoid the climate change ourselves, but of course what we are doing today is already imposing huge climate impacts to other parts of the world. Let's be clear about it. People around the, other people elsewhere in the world, typically people um, of colour, are already dying from the impacts of the, of the uh, uh, greenhouse gases that we have put in the atmosphere over the last 20 or 30 years when we've known what those impacts would be. So we have to rapidly reduce our emissions, not just for our own well-being and our own children's well-being, for the, but for the impacts, to reduce the increased impacts, if you like, yeah. and the poorer parts of the world elsewhere. But in addition to that, the other parts of the world that are quite rightly trying to rapidly uh, develop to improve their quality of life, and to do that they require lots more energy. And if they are going to leapfrog the fossil fuel e um, era uh, and, and put in place renewables and other, way, other methods for doing that, then they're going to need some financial assistance for doing that. And so it is absolutely key that the wealthy parts of the world dip into our pockets. It's what, our, what we owe the poorer parts of the world for the impacts that we're imposing on them now and that we want them not to use the fossil fuels to leapfrog that. But what we're offering, offering are just are just crumbs. So we often hear this language of $100 billion um, dollars per year. That's, that is an incredibly small amount of money from, from all the wealthy countries to the poorer parts of the world. Now that's equivalent to 1 20th of the UK's GDP from all of the wealthy countries to be given to where 80% of the world's population live in the developing world. What we need to be thinking about really seriously are, are trillions of dollars to help those countries. Now I've long been frustrated at the, the, the way in which you have a climate debate and you have a nature debate yeah. and they're just not connected enough. It's crazy. Why is that? And can you tell us what for you is how important is nature in the, in the role in tackling climate change? Well, nature is absolutely key. Climate is just one element of the challenges that we're facing. In fact, it's not just even, even if you don't mind me saying, it's not just about nature. It's about the, you know, it's about the social side of our world as yeah. well. Yeah. And um, so, what we have is a system problem, and we're trying to address it by looking at little bits. So let's look at climate. Let's solve the climate issue. The climate issue is a symptom of a system challenge, and that system challenge is being played out across virtually every single realm of nature. So whether that's our local nature in our parks or wherever it might be, or whether it's sort of the bigger, the bigger nature, if you like, when we see it in our oceans or in some of the, you know, the big issues we see um, in, within nature, right across that board, across, across all of those geogra you know, geographical spaces, that's where we're seeing this challenge playing out. And if we see climate and nature as separate, then we will fail. But I think we also have to recognise there are huge sort of human rights issues in this as well, which play out within in nature, particularly for um, some of the indigenous people, issues do with land rights and so forth. So all of those things need to be thought of collectively and we're failing. But nature is absolutely key to responding to these challenges. Professor Kevin Anderson, thank you very much for talking to the Wildlife Trusts. It's my pleasure.